Hello, my name is Brent Kaltop. I'm president of Urshan College and Urshan Graduate School of Theology. Glad to welcome you to this week's edition of the Urshan Leadership Minute. We're thankful that you're joining us for this weekly vlog as we dive into leadership and we desire to grow together where we can be more effective and efficient in our leadership in the church and then as we minister to the world. Uh, today I want to continue to talk about what leadership is about and we're going to dive a little bit deeper. We want to talk about servant leadership. Um, when we, we see the importance of leadership in the scriptures, Numbers 27 talks about this conversation with Moses and God where it says, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation who may go out before them and go in before them, who may lead them and bring them in. That the congregation of the Lord may not be like sheep which have no shepherd. Um, the scripture over and over again shows us the importance of leadership, whether it is in the home, beginning with Adam and Eve, and, and Paul would continue to talk about marriage and the family, whether it's politically in a nation such as Israel or the nation that we live in, and then of course in the church, whether it was prophets, judges, or apostles in, in, in our current time, pastors, evangelists. There's always been this need and design for leadership to make sure that we are not like sheep that have no shepherd or any under shepherd. In the world, when they begin to talk about leadership and really begin to study it from maybe an academic sense, over 200 definitions of leadership were found between 1990 and 1900, just in 90 years of research, the data. And definitions that talked about the traits of leadership, so, you know, sort of the great man theories or the age-old question, are leaders born or leaders made? Uh, definitions that talked about the skills of leadership, maybe the technical skills that you had to have, or the styles of leadership, the behavior that a leader exhibited. Um, and, and what we came to understand is that there is really no one definition of leadership out there. We, we settled on a definition by a man named Nordhaus that says, leadership is a process whereby an individual influences a group of individuals to achieve a common goal. Just a basic definition of leadership. But even then, we continue to hear about other styles of leadership, and one I want to talk to you about for the rest of our time today is servant leadership. In the 1970s, a man by the name of Greenleaf was intrigued by the idea of servant leadership because he had watched as leaders were known for exhibiting power and authority, and many times, there were occasions where uh, that was in an unhealthy manner, maybe an autocratic manner. And so he began to, to study how leaders could serve the constituents or the members of their organization, and as a result of that, the organization fulfilled its purpose. And so we, of course, in the church know that the idea of serving goes all the way back to the beginning. In fact, that's why servant leadership resounded so much with the church because we understand how much the scripture talks about serving, serving one another, how Jesus came to serve, uh, very resonated. In fact, that's probably also one of the reasons why it has been rejected a lot of times in our world because it sounds too much like the scriptures. When I think about servant leaders, I, I begin to think about elders who have gone on before, people like a, maybe a brother James Kilgore, brother Jesse Williams, or J.L. Pipkin who gave me my first revival just as a a young man took a risk on me. It, it wasn't about as much what I was going to bring to the table or offer the church. He was investing in me and the ministry that God was working in my life. I, I look back at these men and realize that they were great leaders, but they were known for their hearts and their servants' hearts, uh, the things that fulfilled the, the purpose and the identity that Jesus has for us. And so he began to define servant leadership as this natural feeling that one wants to serve and to serve first. And it's out of this desire to serve that they make a conscious choice to get involved in leadership because of the passion, the burden that they have for the ministry or for the organization and to serve people. Some of the characteristics of servant leadership have to do with listening first, listening to constituents or those we are leading, having an empathy, trying to, to uh, be in someone else's shoes, to, to see other people fulfill their purpose and the potential that they have, to, to be aware of what's going on in their lives. And, and over and over again, it's about focusing on those who are in the organizations that we're leading, the departments, the ministries, or even the businesses that we are leading. 
So servant leadership believes that when we invest in people, the, the organization, its goals will take care of itself. The only problem with servant leadership based on how our world defines it is that uh, we as fallen humanity, we can be selfish a lot of times. And so when someone is serving us, many times we'll let them and uh, we will want to do them to serve us in our fulfillment of sometimes our selfish ambitions, what Paul would talks about. And so I want to talk to you about even something deeper than servant leadership and that's transformational leadership. Transformational leadership understands the importance of serving uh, and, and being a servant, but yet it understands that there is a higher call, there's a higher purpose than even the desires of the individuals that we serve. And this is seeking first the kingdom of God. We understand that many times our own personal motives, our, our motives, our desires, the things that we want to accomplish in life, maybe even in our visions and our dreams, sometimes they can be self-serving. Uh, that, that selfish ambition part. And God wants us to seek first the kingdom of God, His righteousness, to go for what He has designed for us. And so the Lord demonstrated this. Jesus, who we talk about the suffering servant of Isaiah, came, and yet He would say, not my will, thy will be done, as He would seek first the kingdom of God. So today, as we talk about servant leadership and transformational leadership and just digging deeper into what leadership is, I'm so thankful that, that the church is about serving and that we've been called to serve. But I also don't want to forget as a leader that there is a higher call than just serving individuals, and that is serving the kingdom and serving God. That there's a higher morality, a higher ethic, and that's the Word of God and biblical principles, that in our leadership, we always have to serve first the Lord. We have to stay true to apostolic doctrines, the principles of God's Word in serving others. Because what happens is God calls us to a higher plane than we can even think or imagine ourselves. God calls us to do more than, uh, than what would enter our heart just from our own, our own works. And so today, as we go to serve, let's serve one another. Let's serve the Lord. And above all, let's seek first the kingdom of God and make sure as we lead others that we find the objectives and the principles of God's word as what guides us and directs us and leads in our decision making. Thank you for joining us today for the Urshan Leadership Minute. We hope you enjoyed this session. We hope you'll join us next week as we continue our dive into leadership and its practical applications in our personal lives and in the life of the church. Please invite somebody, encourage somebody to join you and let's all grow together here at Urshan as we study organizational leadership.